Hey everyone, it's Corona from the Headphone Show. Today with me, I have the Final Audio D8000 Pro. Let's check it out. Okay, so the D8000 Pro, which I'll be referring to as D8K Pro for the remainder of this video, is Final Audio's flagship over year open back headphone and it retails for the jaw dropping price of $4,299. I haven't yet tried the original D8000, but as suggested by its name, the D8K Pro is geared or tuned more towards the use in professional settings such as recording and mastering studios. So since I haven't yet tried the original, then I'll primarily focus in just sharing my listening experience with the D8K Pro throughout this video, and I'll also draw some comparisons to similarly priced headphones that I've tried. So without further ado, as always, we'll start off by checking out the included accessories. Included with the D8K Pro is a molded hard shell case alongside two cables. The first one is a 1.5 meter OSC black cable that has a 3.5 millimeter single end determination, and the second one is a 3 meter OSC silver coated cable with a quarter inch termination. The DAK Pro's accessory selection I think is acceptable, but for a headphone that's in the over $4,000 price range, I would have appreciated to have seen a, a bit more. The likes of a balance cable or different adapters would have been a welcome addition. Moving on to build and comfort, the build on the D8K Pro is outstanding and undoubtedly one that I think is fitting for a headphone with the flagship label. Its chassis consists primarily of an aluminum magnesium alloy that is very precisely machined, which gives the feel of a headphone that's sturdy and has certainly been made with both top-notch materials and the utmost care. Now, I'll mention that although I really doubt any issues will arise from the D8K Pro's build, I commend Final Audio for designing their headphone with longevity in mind, as every part of the D8K Pro can be disassembled and easily repaired or replaced. As for comfort, I actually think that the DAK Pro is one of the more comfortable headphones I've had the chance to try out recently. It does weigh in at 523 grams, so for users who are sensitive to a headphone's weight, they, they might not be their number one choice, but I personally found them to be not that heavy when actually wearing. I think that this is mainly due to the headband and the pads distributing the weight uh, quite evenly. So once you actually have them on your head, I didn't think that they were that heavy. I did have one issue though, and that's that the height adjustment mechanism uh, works with sliders for the ear cups. So every time I took the headphone off and put it back on, I had to readjust it to the setting that was most uh, comfortable for me. Basic stuff aside now, let's talk about sound. Now, the D8K Pro is using Final Audio's AFDS planar magnetic transducer, and AFDS refers to Final Audio's air film damping system, which is a driver structure they created to improve bass reproduction and to blend some of the best qualities of both planar and dynamic driver headphones. I'll be very honest and say that when I first listened to the DAK Pro, before reading up more on it, or checking out the spec sheet or anything, I thought I was listening to a headphone that had a dynamic driver in it. Uh, the reason for this is that for me, its presentation, it was just reminiscent of something like the HD600 or HD800S in that it had that smoother, more relaxed, and in my opinion, more musical transient response that you get with dynamic driver headphones. Additionally, it immediately proved to be a very controlled and precise headphone that possessed great technical capabilities. Unfortunately though, the D8K Pro did have some issues in its tonality, particularly around the mid-range, and as we'll discuss briefly, it does hurt the headphone's timbre. Starting off with the bass, I found the DAK Pro to deliver excellent bass reproduction. Low tones were well textured with exceptional definition and articulation that when paired with the headphone sub bass extension made for a bass response that was clean, deep, and nuanced. Additionally, I also found the stock bass level to be balanced and enjoyable for my taste and preferences. It added just the right amount of warmth to the mix without ever feeling overpowering 
or intrusive on other frequency ranges. The one thing I will note though, is that it did sound to me as though the frequencies under 35 Hertz could have used a little bit uh, more energy just to give a slight pronunciation to that sub bass rumble. But of course this could easily be alleviated with EQ or a bass boost toggle. And in any case, it was pretty subtle. Now we get to the mids, and the mid range is without a doubt where I think that the DAK Pro faces most of its shortcomings. Whilst the fundamental range in the lower mids between 300Hz to around 750Hz is fine and free of any deviations that I could hear, the upper mid range is uneven and feels lacking in presence. First, there is a bump at around 1K that introduces a sort of nasally or congested quality to the DAK Pro's timbre. This is then followed by a very significant recession at around 2.5K, which is what affects the DAK Pro's tonality the most. This upper mid-range dip sucks out a lot of the natural overtones that enrich vocals and instruments. Oddly enough, in my experience, I didn't find this deviation to be as severe when listening to instrumental music, but it really did dampen vocals, making them come across as muted and lacking in bite when they were present. Lastly, this could be because I tend to be sensitive to this area of the frequency response, but I did find 4.5k to be ever so slightly too energetic for my preference, making the upper mid-range to lower treble transition a tiny bit harsh. As for the highs though, I really liked the DAK Pro's treble range and there wasn't really anything for me to take note of. I found the highs here to be even and level throughout with very good upper treble extension that was able to bring out all the harmonics and intricacies of the higher frequencies without sounding harsh or being unnaturally bright. Moving on then to technical performance, we'll start off by talking about resolution, and the DAK Pro is one of the most resolving headphones I've heard thus far, and I think that for its price tag, it performs well. It didn't strike me as being as detailed as the Focal Utopia, but it was very close, and it still displays some of the best internal resolution I've heard in a headphone. Needless to say then, the DAK Pro easily created a structured, pristine image of the music with all the tonal subtleties being precisely and transparently reproduced. Now for soundstage imaging and layering, for these spatial qualities, the DAK Pro again delivers great performance. Its soundstage is akin to that of the LCDX, but it's perhaps even a bit more spacious and more effective in conveying a sense of distance. The DAK Pro also displays good imaging capabilities with some of the most accurate left-right localization I've experienced in a planar magnetic headphone. Even when using them to play Apex Legends, I had no issues discerning the positioning and directionality of sound. Then, as for instrument separation and layering, the DAK Pro provided top-tier performance with all the various tracks that made up a piece being distinct and adequately spaced from each other. Lastly, we have Dynamics, and no, it does not hit as hard as the Utopia or the ZMF Verite, but for a plain magnetic headphone, I think that the DAK Pro has a decent sense of punch and slam. Low tones are still accentuated by a satisfying impact, and upper registers have a tactility to them that makes the music more believable. So overall, it's not the most impressive I've heard in this category, but the DAK Pro does have enough energy in its dynamics to provide an engaging listening experience. As per usual, before heading into the conclusion of this review, I'll briefly talk about EQ. And whilst I don't think that the DAK Pro has a particularly bad or offensive tuning, I do think that it's one that can be improved with the use of EQ. All the issues I've mentioned in the mid-range can be mostly or entirely resolved with the use of EQ, really benefiting the headphone's timbre and giving it a much more natural presentation. So if you'd like to try out my EQ settings for the DAK Pro, there'll be a link in the description down below to a post I've made in the headphones community forums that is essentially an EQ uh, compilation of all the headphones I've reviewed. All right, so now to wrap up this DAK Pro review, at a personal level, I think it's a superb headphone and probably my favorite amongst the flagship models that I've tried. I found it to be very comfortable to wear. It had technical performance that was suitable for its price point and of course, very impressive. And because I am an EQ enthusiast, none of its tonal shortcomings were really a problem for me. 
However, I know that using EQ isn't a solution that works for everyone, so I think that for most people looking for an end game, top tier headphone, my recommendation would still go to the Focal Utopia, as I think that its out of the box tuning is more agreeable and it's also $300 less expensive than the DAK Pro. I will reiterate though that if you don't want using EQ, the DAK Pro is a great option to have on your shortlist if you're in the market for some of the best that high-end personal audio has to offer. Anyways, that is all for me today. I hope you enjoyed this video or found it useful. If you did, do consider dropping a like. And if you'd like to learn more about the DAK Pro or many other headphones, I highly encourage you to check out the review section available on headphones.com. For more headphone audio content, stay tuned by subscribing to The Headphone Show here on YouTube. And until next time, this is Chrono signing off.